When the day is through and done, and the light has long since faded, they emerge from the shadows and their slumber. The night is their cue. This is their sign. This is the story of seven very special birds in their secret and extraordinary life. These are the voices of the night. I, Aubrey Ireland, will translate the story nature has already written. Some bird species practice delayed incubation. This means that the female will not begin incubating until she has laid all of her eggs. The mother's goal is for the eggs to hatch within 24 hours of each other and also to leave the nest together. Martha laid her five eggs over the course of two weeks. If we count the days from the first egg until hatch, incubation would be 40 days. In my opinion, I believe that owls do indeed practice delayed incubation, but the incubation period does not start until all the eggs have been laid. The average clutch size is four eggs. The successful hatch rate of five eggs is only 37%. The first hatched at midnight, the triplets arrived within 24 hours. The excitement, anticipation, and work begins. Once the eggs have hatched, Martha eats the shells for calcium nourishment. Owlets are born already with an acute sense of hearing. Notice how excited they get before the mother enters the box. However, they are born with their eyes closed and they don't seem to have a sense of smell either. Notice how the mother has to maneuver to introduce them to a bug. Their eyes will open in 5-7 to seven days. This will be a disadvantage to the last hatchling, Dimitri. The remaining fifth egg, hatched 5 days after his siblings. Chances of his survival are as low. For the first few days, she and her mate, who we call George, are very busy parents. They hunt all around the clock, feeding their owlets the staples of an eastern screech owl's diet. The mother rips and tears at the meat with her sharp beak and she feeds it to the owlets. Their diet mostly consists of mainly small mammals, small birds, and surprisingly a large number of invertebrates. Eastern screech owls also eat crayfish and also have been known to eat bats, something we have plentifully in Austin, Texas. Since owlets do not have teeth, they cannot chew their food. Therefore, they must swallow their food whole or in large chunks. After an owl swallows its meal, it travels down the esophagus, then through the proventriculus, and finally into the gizzard. The meal is separated into two parts. Digestible material continues to pass through the owl's digestive tract. Material that is not digestible are formed into a rounded pellet. The final step for the owl is regurgitating the pellet. Now you might observe that there is a small, tiny, almost mouse-like looking owl in the box. This is Dimitri, and he is five days younger than his brothers and sisters. There are often siplicides in the nest. Siplicide is when one sibling attacks and kills another sibling. But surprisingly, Dimitri is getting enough food to eat has one of his older siblings looking after him. Things might turn out well for this little guy after all. Now you may be wondering why these screech owls came to nest in this owl box. Eastern screech owls nest in holes and cavities, but they never dig a cavity themselves or build their own nest. Thus they depend on tree holes opened or enlarged by woodpeckers, fungus, rot, or squirrels. They often occupy abandoned woodpecker nest holes. Eastern screech owls adapt to nest boxes, including those built for wood ducks or purple martins, and sometimes they even nest in wood piles, mailboxes, and crates left on the ground. Screech owls cannot survive if all the trees are removed, but the species readily recognizes once trees are replanted, especially if nest boxes are also provided.
Eastern screech owls are also commonly known as the cosmopolitan owl. Now here is a video that took me climbing up to the top of a tree and attaching my cell phone to a pole and looking at the owls. This video will hopefully show you the size comparison from the baby owlets to the owl box. I may not be the best photographer in the world, but at least it will show you what they look like with some color. On average, owls fledge at 31 days. Brood crowding also plays a role. Our parliament is well ahead of schedule and practice by flapping and flying in the box. At only 27 days old, they're ready to leave the nest. Or are they? Success with the mother close by, two outlets fledge one night. Their siblings watch in awe as each one of their sisters and brothers leave. Some mothers withhold food to stimulate fledging and weight loss for easier wing loading. Two fledge on night two, but not as graceful. Maternal assistance may be needed. This owlet was the largest and we think the firstborn who took care of Dimitri. Flight fail is very common. Fortunately, he is well camouflaged and ran off into the bushes. And then Dimitri is alone in the nest. Each night and day, he watches and waits for his brothers and sisters in hope that they will return. And he waits. And waits. Each night, his mother comes back to the nest. But there is a time when all creatures must be leave home. Three days of the place to himself, Dimitri is ready to fledge. Parents remain close by too. And then, the father George returns. 
All of his children have departed from the nest. He rummages around his old home and then he picks up the oddest thing. A single stick. He flies off and we never saw him again. But why he brought the single stick, we might never know. This was a secret life of owls.